Hi, my name is Robin, and welcome back to the second video in the series of APIs and data. Today, I would like to use all tricks to automate some of our API requests. In this tool, we have a download tool available, and with the download tool, we can input stuff like request headers provided by the API. And I'll finish off by showing you an example of how to download multiple pages from an API. So let's dive right into it. So like in a previous video, we use the dad jokes API icon has dadjokes.com forward slash API to go to the documentation. And one of the things we skimmed over was the API response format and that it can accept headers accepts. We can have a text HTML format that's what we visualized in the browser itself, but we can also return the output as a JSON file or just as a plain text response. So how do we do this in Altrix? Let's start by bringing in a text input tool. If we drop it onto our canvas, it will allow us to type in and create columns. So we'll create a column called URL. And for the record itself, we're going to grab the fetch a random dad joke URL. So that's the HTTPS forward forward slash iconhasdadjoke.com, which will return us a random joke. Now, if we run this workflow, we can see on the bottom that we have our URL sitting in our first cell. Our next step is to grab a download tool. And this download tool can be dropped onto your canvas or connected to the text input and it will auto populate itself. So the field that we want to download is the URL. If we put a browse tool behind this download, so if we hit run, within under a second, we've returned a request. We can see additional to our URL column, we've now got a download data column, as well as a download headers. And as specified by the documentation, if you do not tell the API what kind of response you would like, it'll return you an HTML response. And that is reflected in the download data itself. Now the browse tool has the capability to sort of render this HTML output. And we can see that a random dad joke has shown up. But what if, if we want to specify that we would just want to have a text output? Well, we could do that in a few different ways. Let's first do it by just going to the download tool itself. In the top left, in the configuration, we can see there's a tab called headers. If we go into it, we can manually add a header to it. So our name is going to be accept according to the documentation and the value is going to be text forward slash plain. Now, if we hit and run this workflow again, what you can now see is that we do not get an HTML response. We just immediately get a string file returned with the dad joke embedded into it. Now for our third request type, we can return a JSON response. For that, the header accept has to be an application forward slash JSON. So if we add that, to the headers in the download tool. We change our text plane to application JSON and we hit run. We can now see that we have a JSON formatted joke. Now JSON is a specific formatted structure and we can use the JSON parse tool inside Alteryx to parse it out. So we drag and drop this tool in between the download and the browse tool and we'll point our JSON field to the download data. If you now hit run, we can see that our output consists of three rows. So we have our initial URL and we've got our JSON name and JSON value string parsed out. So we've got the ID and an ID can be used to always return this particular joke. We've got the joke and we've got the status. All right, before we move on, 
I'll show you how you can additionally change the headers by having those already embedded in your text input. So if we add uh, a header that has to be inputted into the download tool, we have to start by giving it the column name accept. So that's the value that's used by the API to look at the response formats. We'll use accept and let's do one of each text forward slash HTML application forward slash JSON and text forward slash plain. We'll continue to use the random that joke URL. And then if we go to the download tool, rather than in the headers having it specified by a manual input, we delete this and we select the accept button here on the bottom. And what this does, if you want to have values from a field, the values itself have to be the response format, such as application JSON, and the header has to be the header type. So the column name has to be accept. Now, if we hit run, on this workflow. And we just look at the output of the download file. We can see that it's run three times the API. The first one returned a JSON structure. The second one is a plain text and the third one is an HTML. So it's sorted slightly differently from what we've inputted, but we can see what our accepts were at the start and our responses. All right. Let's jump into example now how to automate downloading of multiple jokes and multiple pages. So I'll jump to a clean workflow. And we'll start again by dragging in text input. And we'll have to use the documentation to scroll down to see how we can search for particular jokes. So for the search for that jokes, we've got a request header, a URL with a forward slash search in the end. And it gives us a few endpoints that we can input page, limit, and term. Let's start with just a general search. We'll create a URL column. We'll add a download tool. And we're going to specify the use of a, a JSON output. So we'll do that in the text input and put accept application forward slash JSON. And inside the download tool underneath the headers, we make sure to tick accept. And let's stick a browse tool behind the download. What is returned is a JSON format of a search which is blank. So it will search the whole database and it returns us, as we can see in the bottom, a page. Let's parse this out with the JSON tool. And let's run it again to see what it looks like. Uh, of course, we have to make sure that in the JSON field, we'll select the download data to parse out the JSON structure. And we can now see in the bottom right, some of the details of the searches. So the current page is returns first, the limit is 20 pages, the next page is two, the previous page is one, and then the first result shows up. The result of the joke zero with the ID and the actual joke, and then so forth for going on. Now there's some interesting information in here. So it returns you stuff like current page and the next page. So you can use these numbers to automate URL generation. So you can pre-identify how many pages you need to cycle through, how many downloads it has to do to return all the jokes that you're looking for. And all the way on the bottom, it shows you a status and the total jokes and the total pages available are in the Dad Jokes API. So what if we want to return all the 650 jokes in the database? Well, that means we have to cycle through 32 pages. So what we now want to do is we want to grab the total amount of pages available and generate the predefined searches for us. So let's start by putting in a filter tool behind the JSON parse. 
and we know that our total pages is available in the JSON name total underscore pages. So we can apply a filter to JSON name and we say when it equals total underscore pages, return a true. So we can now see we have a single value available and a single JSON name. So this value 32 is the only thing that we're interested in. So I'll put a select tool behind it. And with this select tool, I'll remove anything unnecessary in there. The URL, the accept, the download headers, and the JSON name. So the next time this workflow is run, we'll always know it will pick up your JSON value string for total pages. Now we'll change the type into an integer because we want to use this number to generate an amount of rows equaling the page numbers that we want to investigate. So behind the select tool, we're going to input a tool called generate rows. And what we'll do here, we'll create a new column called page. Our initial expression is going to be one. And our condition is page has to be smaller or equal to our JSON value. And we can bring in that condition under current variables. So we have our JSON value string sitting in here. We'll double click on it and we see the expression shows up. We'll put it on the right side of the equation. We hit OK and it will refer to JSON value string. Now in the loop expression, we're going to make sure because we're going to create a new field called page that sits here on the bottom. If we now run this workflow, We'll see we've created a single row for every single page that we want to query. Now to set up the URL, we can use the existing field we have over here. So we'll just copy over this text input. We'll move it close to the generate rows. And what we'll do is we'll change the accept. So let's say we just want to return a text now. So we'll scroll back to the top to check and make sure that we use text forward slash plain. All right, and back to the search, we'll just identify uh, what other query strings we can enter. So for page, which returns the fetch the default of one. So in order to add this to the URL, we need to have the number appended to the existing URL that we have over here. So we use the append tool to append the fields to the initial URL. Now, when we do this, we've got to make sure in the bottom left that we allow for all appends. And when we run this workflow, we can now see that we have one URL available per row and with the page behind it. So let's bring these together in a formula tool to create a final query strings that we want to input into the download tool. We'll create a new column called new URL. And what we do is we want to grab the existing URL and add a few pieces of string behind it. So in order to add a page, a limit or a term, you got to start with the initial URL we have here and we add a question mark behind it, followed by the page and then equals the number. So we'll do that in our formula tool. So we say URL question mark page equals plus a to string. So to turn our integers into a string and then we say page and note decimal places. You can already see in the preview that we're getting a, a URL question mark page, e, page equals one. So let's hit run. And we now can see that we have got a range of searches with multiple pages already in here that we can now put into our download tool. So as expected before, we'll grab the next download tool, put it behind the formula. We specify that we now want to use the new URL and in the headers, we're going to say we want to grab the accept so that we get a plain text back and we'll put a browse tool behind this. And let's hit run. 
As you might expect, it might take a little longer, but in just a few seconds, we've returned all the requests. So what do we end up with? Actually, we've got 32 records are displayed. So 32 times we've sent the search of particular pages to the API. And if we look into certain cells and we double click on them, we can see that every single page has 20 jokes in them. So what we've done now is we've returned the 650 dad jokes in the dad jokes API all into one workflow. And the next time when we hit run again, we'll fetch all the new dad jokes that have been added because it will cycle through all the pages, check how what the total amount of pages are, check what the total amount of jokes are, and we'll return everything in the end. So that's it for this video of APIs and data. Feel free to like and subscribe for more content on Alteryx and Tableau, and to keep an eye out in the next episode of this series. Thanks for watching.